feel like your brain is going to explode with questions and concerns about parenting, education, and what is right for you and your child. Hi everyone, welcome to the Mindful Mummies podcast. I'm Bree. And I'm Stina. And we're sisters-in-law with backgrounds in education, and combined we have five very busy boys. Our hope is to create a community for parents where we can learn, laugh, and support each other. We'll be joined by special guests who inspire us and bring different perspectives to the table. Thanks for joining us. Bree and I have been curious about vegan cooking for a while now. We love trying out new plant-based recipes and have recently started to eliminate dairy from our kids' diets. We were surprised that they transitioned so quickly and now ask for almond milk instead of cow's milk. It's definitely a process with two husbands who are not quite ready to become fully vegan, but we're loving learning and experimenting and overall we strive to find balance in our diets and lives by choosing plant-based as much as possible for us and our families. We're thrilled to be able to learn more about vegan cooking with our guest today who is a passionate mompreneur extraordinaire. Susan Pratt lives in beautiful North Vancouver, BC, Canada with her husband Randy, two-year-old Carrington and is a stepmom to three amazing humans, Jeremy, Liz, and Sam. She has a deep love for nature, animals, our planet, her 12-year-old warm blood horse named Greystoke, who she likes to call Mr. Gray, and plant-based food. How we eat our food, what we choose to eat, and how we prepare our meals are all questions that Susan has explored extensively. The more she learned, the more she realized that she has an impact on not just her own choices, but her family's and the environment. Susan became vegan into her adult years after personally educating herself on deforestation, overfishing, ocean plastics, and inhumane treatment of farm animals. At times, it can feel overwhelming. What can one single person do to affect change? Then something sparked in her. She felt a need to make a difference and then started with her number one passion, food. Hello, Susan. Welcome to the Mindful Mummies podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It's an honor and a pleasure. We're very excited to talk to you today. We have so many questions for you. (laughs) I know. Where do we start? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe you could run us through a bit of your background and just how this all came about. And uh, yeah, we can start with that today. Absolutely. Well, firstly, um, congratulations on on you guys, um, you know, just trying uh, to um, get your family to eat more plant-based. I know, you know, it can be difficult. You guys have five kids between the two of you. So, uh, you know progress not perfection so congrats on that you know, you. Um, you know making little steps little changes um uh so a bit about me i um i've been full vegan for i guess about three years my uh, my whole family is my my husband and my daughter um before that you know i was just a normal kind of meat eater um you know i i thought to me healthy eating was um, a plate with some protein veg and starch and then it happened um i went on a trip uh we were in austria and i wanted to go to this restaurant because it had a horse on the menu and of course i didn't speak the language so i thought oh horses i love horses let's go there well lo and behold they were serving horse oh, God. and i was immediately <laughs> appalled because i have a horse oh. and it hit me like it's normal for these people to be eating horses and the ball dropped and I was like, I'm such a hypocrite. Here I am eating cow, pigs and chickens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just because it's normal for me, doesn't mean it's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just, after that day, I just couldn't do it. I just, you know, I really was faced with this flexible morality. I had that, you know, one animal is okay to eat and others aren't. Mm-hmm. And I just really had a, just had an issue with it. And then, um, uh, around this time I was trying to get pregnant and I, you know, my, my best friend is vegan. And, um, after, you know, seeing the changes in her body and her husband's and how good they looked and, um, how well they ate, I, um, my husband and I just started researching it. Hey, maybe there is something to this, this veganism. And, um, after, you know, doing some research and looking at the documentaries, I really wanted my body to be, the best vessel it could be to, to have this child. Mm -hmm. And I learned that, you know, toxins from like fish and, and, um, Mm -hmm. antibiotics from the meat and the inflammation that it caused for the body, it all went through the, the baby and the placenta. And I thought, well, like, I don't want that. And so I said to my, I said to Randy, my husband, I said, let's just try it for a month. 
and see how we feel. Let's go full vegan, just like completely do it the right way. Yeah. And we'll go from there. Well, we've never turned back. He lost 17 pounds. Wow. I felt amazing. I had way more energy. I slept better. My skin was clear. And then, and then a few months later, I got pregnant. And it was like this miracle. I just everything just seemed to fall into place. I'm not to say go vegan, you'll get pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, 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 yeah. It worked yeah, for you. Yeah. Wow, wow. And what? So, what were some of the, what were some of the things that you started to notice right away? Like, I, I, I'm so curious too about your husband as well because our husbands are so reluctant to drop the meat. They've gotten better. Mm-hmm. We were able to do some vegan, vegetarian meals throughout the week. Um, but they, I mean, on the weekends, it's like, they need to have their steak. That's Mm -hmm. very important to them. (laughs) So yeah. What are some of the things that you've noticed with your family right away? Um, well, right away, I'll tell you. So I used to have, I used to call it my fun belly. I had this little tummy and I just thought, this is just how I'm built. (laughs) I'm an apple. And I was like, it's my fun belly. It's it's okay. It's just part of me. I love it. It went away. Wow. No, it's not part of me. My fun <laughs> belly is gone. Um, and so it's his. He's lost, like, a lot of weight. Um, wow. It's no today. And, that, and that's just through diet. Um, I'm an athlete, too. I ride horses. My recovery from riding is so much quicker. Hmm. Um, and, you know, you ride, you fall sometimes. Well, when I fall, it doesn't... <laughs> It doesn't hurt as much. Like I, I recover wow. quicker. Okay. If I follow my butt, I just get back up and, and the next day I'm a little sore, but not like I was. Yeah. Um, my skin, like I'm, I'm not getting blemishes as much. Um, what else? Like my, just my eyes would feel brighter. I have hair, um, nails. I just, I just feel great. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know how to say it. I just, yeah. um, yeah. And it, and I feel good knowing too that, you know, like I, I look at what's happening now with the, um, you know, in the world with, with us having to be home and, um, like the, like the environmental impact that, um, us just being home Mm -hmm. having like in a positive way. Um, you know, I just feel good knowing that like, I, you know, I, I care so deeply about animals. I care about, you know, animals that go extinct. I care about, you know, the koalas that were burning in Australia. People were so outraged about these poor little animals, but then they were going home and throwing, like, chicken on the barbecue. Uh, I know. It just doesn't make sense, right? It just, yeah. No, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. And I try to tell people, and and even, like, even dairy, what happens to these poor animals in the farm. I mean, some, some farms... You know, not every single farm is, you know, is a a horror show in, you know, in that way. But mm-hmm. many, many are, mm-hmm. and no animal wants to be plugged into a machine and, and being milked all day. And like, yeah. that's just not a happy existence for another being mm-hmm. that feels and, you know, has a soul. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, so I just and feel this good is what knowing I that with all the time because I'm such an animal lover and. Ugh, I yeah I've, I'm I'm pretty good now I don't eat red meat I still eat chicken um but yeah it's just I it's so hard to come to terms with like like just to justify it to mm-hmm. me too I mean yeah you think about the cows out there and the pigs but then it's then again like the chickens are isn't like the chicken factories are probably one of the worst aren't they mm-hmm. as far as the treatment goes and I know. So, yeah. I, yeah. When I was in grade right. n- nine, I was in an ecology class. I had this class, this teacher who was amazing and it was French and our French elective was ecology. And, um, and he, he taught us, he, he showed us like videos of animal ag- agriculture. And so when I was in grade nine, I became a vegetarian to my brother's like chagrin cause he, he was such a meat eater. And, um, and my parents were very supportive and, and I continued on that way probably until I was like 18 and I got a job at the keg. And when I was working there, I was convinced to try steak again. And I was like, oh, this is delicious. So like, and then I went back to eating meat. Um, but I've always sort of 
gone back to what I learned in grade nine. And I've always thought about that. And I, I, I don't like to touch meat. I don't like to cook it myself. If someone cooks it for me, I'll eat a little bit of it. But, Mm -hmm. um, and when at that, that same time, when I was like in high school, we actually ended up moving to Langley for a little bit. And so we would drive the highway and we would drive beside the chicken trucks. And I remember just being like, so sad of all these chickens on these trucks, like jammed into these little tiny compartments and, and yeah, and then I think it was just pure like laziness that I sort of stopped being vegetarian because every everyone around me was eating meat and it was harder for for me at that time. And I feel like now in the world there are so many more people making these vegetarian and and vegan choices mm-hmm. that it's so much easier. Um, like and my my family, if I cook vegetarian, they will eat it. Like our mm-hmm. kids love veggie dogs, love them. <laughs> like they don't notice any difference. They love almond milk and oat milk. Um, so I feel like it, it is becoming easier now yeah. and now I feel like I don't really have an excuse except that I just need to get into new habits. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So what were some of like, were there any particular meals that really worked to like get your family to buy in the beginning? Oh, I just, I love to cook. Yeah. Um, so like true story, Randy will go, can we go out for dinner tonight? And I'm like, why? Why? <laughs> what do you mean I can't cook? He's like, no, no, no. I just didn't want you to like have to be like you're cooking. And I'm like, no, I don't want to. So he just like, I just, I love to experiment. He no, not want anyone particular. He just shows up and I feed him. So that makes it easy for him to be vegan. Yeah. Um, back to your husband. Like he, he, my husband, he will go out with his brothers and they'll serve steak and he'll have a little bit of steak and that, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Like he's 99 percent vegan if I go up to someone's house and they're cooking with dairy and eggs I'm gonna eat it I'm gonna enjoy my meal and be thankful for the food that was made for me mm-hmm. I'm not gonna make a big deal of it. I'm not gonna talk about it yeah I'm not gonna eat meat because that's just physical preference I won't do but mm-hmm. you know I'm it's not an all or nothing kind of thing right so I think what mm-hmm. you guys are doing is great it's do what you can do what works for your family um you know, some tips I have like for kids is, um, I make my food really fun. I get Carrington involved in making it like I'll make, um, zucchini noodles for her and let her like Mm -hmm. twist it. Um, I make eating a game. We love to cheers. And so she'll cheer everything. And so (laughs) I'll go cheer the mushroom. And so she knows that it's called a mushroom and then I'll eat the mushroom too. And she'll cheers with the mushroom. Yeah. And that way she gets to know her food and she gets to, yeah. she'll try things, right? Cheer spinach and, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I'll eat the spinach with her and stuff. So, you know, we just try to do that and make it really fun. Um, I celebrate with like a fun dessert afterwards. I, I um, keep the, the aguafaba from the can of chickpeas. Yeah. And if you guys don't know, it it up to this beautiful like whipping cream and you just put a little bit of um powdered sugar and vanilla in it and she can eat it right out of the bowl and it's like nothing it's like air yeah and so we celebrate with that with a big bowl of like whipped cream after the, the <laughs> meal and so, such great um, ideas. yeah so we just like you know we make it fun and i'll um you know i try to keep like sh- she's never really eaten cheese but she does love that cheesy flavor so i make um I have this recipe on my blog for this nacho cheese sauce mm. and it tastes I saw that. Lovely. That's really good. So I know we've all had it. We won't talk about we've had it. That 7-Eleven. Yeah. yeah. The nacho is at like two in the morning. Yeah. Like, I know we've done it. So it tastes like that. Yeah. It tastes that decadent and that gooey and it's just, it's phenomenal. And she eats it on everything and it's cashews, um, potato, carrots, and nutritional yeast. So it's full of like B12s and vitamin A and it's so good for her. Um, So I just, I put that on everything for her. Nice. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I can see my kids just like getting them to eat broccoli and cauliflower and putting that all over it. Yeah. <laughs> and they would be like, okay, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I make a big batch of it and then I'll freeze some and then pull it out and it makes like the greatest grilled cheese. And oh, so things yeah. like that I make, um, you know, lots of pastas. I put like, veg, you know, I clean out the fridge with, um, you know, I always keep frozen peas and corn on hand because they love that. And so I pour that, um, pour that into the pasta you know, if green smoothies, smoothies are the best to, mm-hmm. you know, for, um, 
if your children are more plant-based, um, omegas are very important to get in their diet. So okay. I put hemp and flax. Um, I even, so this trick, um, you know, the bagged salad. Yeah. That you buy and immediately, as soon as you put it into the fridge, it goes back. Yeah. And something happens. The second you get it out of the store, curls. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know what it is. Yeah. But, um, and then I keep buying it over yeah. and over. So, Easy. Um, Easy. <laughs> So I take it and I freeze it in um, a glad bag in the freezer and then put it in smoothies. Yes, that's yeah. great. So yeah. it's just so I, I don't waste it. And then she gets her greens and, and things like that. So hide things in smoothies. That's a really good way to get things into um, kids' diets. You know, there, there are some good vegan alternatives. Like I, I'm not super big on unprocessed foods, but if you need like chicken like those guardian chicken nuggets or yeah. like you know, meat burgers. Those are for sometimes like mm-hmm. anything, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're like um, a treat. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you said the kids love veggie burgers, right? So those, mm-hmm. you know, those are really good like alternatives if, you know, if you do have picky eaters and, mm-hmm. um, you know, and I make things like, um, uh, banana and ice cream with bananas oh, yeah. and frozen strawberries. And, um, I even get kombucha in her that way. I make yeah. a kombucha, um, smoothie and yeah there's just I just kind of get have fun with it and I, I try things and I swing for the fences if she doesn't like it eh, I'll try it again another time or I'll yeah. you know I'll put it in something else but yeah. you know and when I the trick to when I give her something I don't have that look of like oh oh no is she gonna like it yeah. I have a big smile on my face yeah and I'm like yes you're gonna love that broccoli <laughs> yeah it's so good and then if she doesn't eat it I tend to steal it and like oh you're missing out is so delicious and I I ham it up and, yeah. and she's like maybe I am missing something and so yeah uh, yeah. yeah so you get fun and not you yeah. know not dwell on it if she doesn't need it or mm-hmm. yeah not too much pressure about it yeah like, try yeah. again yeah so can you if if, if women a, a woman who is pregnant or trying to get pregnant um, what would be sort of like your advice for her if she was considering going plant-based and then maybe raising her child plant-based? Um, can you kind of take us back to how somebody would go about that? And are there or any where like, to supplements start or, or things, things that you that need to do from your experience? Yeah, I can just share from, from, what, I, from what I did. Um, so I met with a nutritionist just to make sure that, you know, what I was eating was the right type of um, food for my body. I made sure to eat um, lots of nuts, lots of beans. Um, I made sure to have enough calories. So I was constantly eating. Um, I'd snack on like water-based um, uh, fruits and veggies. Um, I did, I do take supplements. I take a B12 supplement and a D vitamin supplement because, you know, we're in Vancouver. We don't always get enough sun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, just make sure that, that, you know, it, it's, it's right for your body because everybody's different, but, um, you know, just, if you eat lots of variety, you're going to get all of your omegas and your vitamins, you know, just make sure that you have a color, colorful plate, you know, mm-hmm. eating just, you know, all types of vegetables, um, yeah, nuts and grains. Yeah. Just keep eating mama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keep eating your food. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and then if they were, so as far as when they're babies, obviously breast milk and what if, so then, you know, if they're not having breast milk, then soy is, you do soy, right? For formula. For formula. Um, There's a good one. Um, I order it. um, It's called um, Nature's One. They have a, they have a plant-based formula. I, I actually had to go, it's, it's not common. I don't think that, um, I had to ask another vegan mom where she got her formula. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. It's difficult to find vegan formula actually. Mm-hmm. So yeah. one, uh, it's no plug. <laughs> it's not sponsored. It's yeah. not good formula. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I think I was looking for some and I only found a soy based one at whole foods it was like the only place I could find it. I tried other grocery stores and I couldn't find oh, it. Oh really? I yeah. couldn't even find it there. Yeah, this is recently, recently, I guess. Yeah. Cool. And then, and then for, for toddlers or what, or I guess when you start to introduce, I mean, it's when they're, when you start to introduce solids to them, they're eating mostly vegetables anyways at the beginning, but 
then as they start to grow and become toddlers, what are you substituting in for protein and, and all of that? Just, yeah. Um, well, so all plants have protein. And if she's eating a variety of plants, she's going to get enough protein. Um, but I make sure, you know, she loves, at the, in the beginning, all she wanted to eat was black beans and blueberries, mm -hmm. little finger foods. And she... It's, it's perfect. Black beans are the best source of protein, better than any type of meat. Um, so I make sure to give her, you know, beans and brown rice, um, nuts. I make the smoothies with hemp um, and flaxseed in it. Um, I put it in her oatmeal. Um, mm -hmm. I have, we have whole oats in the morning, and I just try to get lots of like, like butter, nut butters in her diet and yeah she is like you would she's chubby she's a chunky monkey <laughs> she's 90 like percent of, of her height and weight I, I wish she was here I would show you yeah she's got a big little Buddha belly and she's a chunky little vegan baby and yeah. she's never had meat or cheese or and That's she's amazing so it's amazing and so how do you deal with um like them seeing other children eating mm -hmm. non-vegan food and they want, like if, if your daughter want, you know, sees a cookie that a friend's eating and how do you deal with that? What do you say to her? Well, that's, a, that's a good question. It, it, it's something I haven't been faced with yet, um, but it's definitely something I've thought of. Um, for us, for me personally, not eating meat is a um, ethical choice. Mm -hmm. So she's not going to eat meat but something like a cookie um that has a bit of meat and dairy it's she doesn't have an allergy mm -hmm. it's not going to hurt her um I'll 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 use my discretion you know mm -hmm. if it's one cookie and it's a friend gave it to her I'm not gonna freak out and ah like slap it out of her mouth or right. yeah. yeah you know but we're, I'm gonna try to limit it as much as possible mm -hmm. um and just explain to her why we're making the choices we we are mm -hmm. um and what you know what what the, the egg and, and dairy is actually doing to her body like age appropriately of course mm -hmm. um you know and just and just kind of go from there mm -hmm. um yeah. things like you know she comes home with say a chocolate bar that's she was given given at a party i'll make sure to have lots of um swap outs you know, oh, here's a vegan chocolate bar instead. Mm -hmm. You know, make sure to have lots of snacks on hand and things that we can switch out. So she doesn't feel like she's missing out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I like to make fun things. Like, I just bought a cotton candy maker. Oh, cotton candy cool. is vegan. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah so, like, I make lots of fun. Like, check out my blog. I make tons of fun, like, desserts and, um, and things. So she's really not going to feel, you know, like she's, you know she's lacking anything at least I yeah. hope that's my goal so yeah yeah that's yeah. so yeah you have to so it kind of forces you to get creative <laughs> yeah yeah well yeah. I like in as a teacher at school I always had kids with different dietary concerns whether it was vegan or I had kids that were gluten-free I had one child that was allergic to sugar and it actually like really negatively impacted her um, and then we had kids who had diabetes and so, and not allergies. And so I always had like a stash of st extra stuff at, in my desk. If, if parents were bringing in like birthday treats, I would have like special little things that I'd sourced out and were okay for everybody, whether it was vegan gummies or if it was mm -hmm. stickers instead. And yeah, so I think, I think that there's lots of ways to still make sure that kids, yeah, yeah. I have to say I was blown away with my own children when when I decided to just cut milk out because the amount of milk that they were starting to consume was starting to really concern me. Like we were going through jugs and jugs of milk and um, <clears throat> I just thought, and then at that time it was when all of this dairy information was coming out. The documentaries were all really popular, yeah. Yeah, and, and <clears throat> you know, one day I just said, I just start. I, I don't even think I told them. I just started substituting almond milk, and at first they were like, "This isn't real milk. This is not. <laughs> this is not milk, mom." And and I was like, "Well, we don't have. We, this is all we have now." And I was amazed. I thought I would never be able to get them onto almond or soy milk, and they love it now. It's all they drink, and they have it in their cereal, and so. For anyone out there listening, it's actually, it is possible to make these little transitions, like 
And I think the important thing is, is that like not to, I don't know. I think for my family, if I were to just do it all at once, it probably wouldn't work. But doing little things like where you can feel like you're making a bit of a difference, Mm -hmm. like substituting in the almond milk and making those plant-based meals. Yeah. And you're, you're doing a lot of vegan baking, which your kids are loving and Mm -hmm. yeah. So it is possible. Perfection, right? Yeah. know and just be easy on ourselves but one thing that is true and um you can see it in your kids your your tastes do change yes yeah more that you feed so our um our gut bio is is directly connected to our brain and what we feed our gut um the bacteria in it create it's like anything it wants to stay alive so it craves the foods that keep it alive so if your gut bio is used to, you know, sugars and fats and and salts and and things like that, it will hijack your brain to make you crave that. That's Mm -hmm. why I used to, I never thought I could be quote unquote off cheese. I was Mm -hmm. like, but what about cheese? Like, yeah, I can't stop cheese. And because I haven't given my gut cheese, I never, I don't even think I'd want to eat cheese if I saw it. Like it's really, that's the one I have trouble with the most, I think. (laughs) But you will, it'll stop. Like you'll stop wanting it. You'll stop. um, Yeah. You'll, you'll just lose interest in it because your body, your body changes, your tastes change. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. It's weird. Like I didn't, I heard people say that and I was like, nah, nah, Mm -hmm. that's not true. It really is true. I can sit here now three years later. Um, like if there is a, a, a little molecule of cheese in something, yeah. I'm like, whoa, that is so strong. <laughs> it's like, it really stands out. It's, yeah. it's different. So I, I, I couldn't eat a chunk of cheese. I just, hmm. so yeah. so yeah, just give it some time. Like, it, like yeah. any new habit, it's going to take, um, it's going to feel different at first, but then, you know, uh, the more you do it, the easier it's going to come, become, the more your tastes are going to change, the more your habits you're going to get into, you know, using less at first. Okay. Maybe we'll start using less cheese or maybe we'll start substituting it for dairy free or make my vegan cheese sauce that will, you know, mimics cheese and is just as delicious in my opinion. Um, you know, and then just starting, you know, one day a week doing a vegan meal, two days a week, three days a week, you know, every breakfast, every lunch, and then just slowly start doing it. Or you can do it like I did and go full Turkey and, um, no pun intended. Yeah. No, no, full, go, go full tofu, not turkey. Go full tofu. <laughs> and, yeah. and, um, and, and then see the changes that your body makes, right? It's, yeah. Um, I love the idea of a one month challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to just like do it for a month and see how you feel. Mm-hmm. Maybe we need to do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That would be awesome. And hey, what else are we doing? We're quarantined at home, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I love. I love the idea of leaving quarantine better than you came in. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, there, I'm seeing so much of that. And and I think that people are really embracing this opportunity to cook and bake and 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 reconnect with your food and where it comes from. And mm-hmm. and I think, yeah, this is a great time to be taking on some sort of like healthy challenge, challenge like yeah. that. So yeah. for people who are like right now spending lots of time in the kitchen and cooking and baking, do you have... Um, any tips? Like I know that right now during the pandemic and during COVID, a lot of people are trying to boost their immunity. Um, we've been trying to take vitamin C and eat lots of vitamin C rich foods. Do you have any tips or suggestions for great um, immune boosting vegan dishes and foods? Absolutely. Well, all vegetables are good. I have tons of recipes on my blog, susancooksvegan.com. Um, but primarily like garlic raw garlic is so good for your immune system and, and onions, um, turmeric, uh, red peppers, tons of vitamin C. Um, I have this great recipe. If, if you're finding yourself, um, you don't want to go out to get bread. I have this stovetop flatbread recipe, uh, that's topped with tomatoes and garlic. So it's super immune boosting, but it takes five minutes wow. and it's basically just, um, flour, um, baking powder and a little bit of oil and you make it on the stove top, like in, yeah. your, in a pan with no oil. And it's like this beautiful flatbread. Yum. Okay. So I it's so, make, that. make it nice. Yeah. It's so, you can top it with like, you can top it like a pizza. You can eat it, um, with soup. You can make a sandwich out of it. So I have things like that. I've been really thinking about, you know, what if, you know, what if people can't get out to the stores and, um, 
So I have lots of recipes like that um, in the pipeline and coming up that I'm posting. Um, today I just did a um, the sandwich with chickpeas that sort of tastes like egg salad, like an egg salad, kind of chicken salad, tuna salad combined into one. Yeah. So um, that's really good. It has ton, like high protein and um, has garlic in it too. So it's super immune boosting. So I have lots of fun things like that that you can you can try and um, add into your vegan repertoire. Yum. So if people are looking for your recipes and, and where can they find you? Where's the best place to go? SusanCooksVegan.com. <laughs> um, yeah so I'm on my it's on my blog um it's on I'm on Instagram and Facebook and you know what if you are at home and you are looking at your fridge and you don't know what to make hit me up we'll come up with something together I'm more than happy to to brainstorm with you and you know hey let's make something let's make something up with with what you got in your fridge it'll be a fun challenge so yeah. um I'm here for if you have any questions or um don't know what to make or you just you know need someone to talk to about what's happening in your um food life or just anything i'm here i'm i'm i love talking to people so that's great and you're on pinterest too I, we've been looking at your recipes there yes. okay yes, yes, yeah yes. yeah and pinterest, the, Instagram, Facebook. and you've been interviewed on tv as well there's where you make a recipe oh. yeah on yes global. i've been on global news i've done um i've been honored uh to do be twice on global news and hopefully again so that's been fun so i've done some um fun i did a dessert and some plant-based pierogies and that's another thing a really fun thing to do with kids um i make the pierogi bat dough yeah. and then get them to pick their own pierogi toppings so almost like you would like a taco you know how yeah. you can like pick your own little things and then close it up and then cook it right then and there so it's a great way to get kids involved Yum. with their food pierogies. to make your own pierogies <laughs> yeah Fun. Nice. Okay, well, we will make sure to put the links to all these on our blog to share with everybody as well, mm -hmm. so they'll know where to find you and how to reach you. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to add, Susan? Or just... Um, I just, you yeah, know, I just want to thank you guys for for having me on, and it's a great, you know, I love, um, you know, the opportunity just to to share my love of plant based. Um, being in diets and it's it really isn't a diet it's a lifestyle um you know it's just I know in my heart that what I'm doing is the best thing for my body and my family and the planet that I I know I'm doing the right thing um and change starts with what we put on our plates the decisions we make in restaurants and in stores mm -hmm. and what we're telling people that we will or will not buy and consume and you know we we can all make small changes that cumulatively will make change for um for our world so thank mm -hmm. you for just making this part of your guys's platform and um letting me talk and share my little bits no for sure i definitely feel like i'm learning learn some new things and i'm, I'm excited i'm gonna definitely pick some recipes I think from your blog and do them with my kids because yeah. um we actually made pizza last night with our kids and they just oh my gosh they ate it up they loved it so much so yeah. I think it's time to yeah it's that it's just like your home may as well get the kids in the kitchen cooking and Step get the whole family involved and yeah so oh, thank you for I heard you were doing us. a PDA challenge did anybody else hear that I, I, after 30 days. I, I know I, I think I yeah, think maybe we need to be doing do this yeah. get, get our followers involved we could all yeah, support we each could. other we could we could do we could collab yeah. and do it together that would be fun Love actually it. that would be really fun yeah maybe we'll, we'll put our brains to work and think of some ideas and yeah. yeah maybe we could get all of our followers on board and collaborate that would be fun. And I'm here you guys I'll help you all together great yeah that would be so much fun okay well thank you so much for coming on the mindful mummies today it was awesome talking with you I can't wait to meet you in real life one day <laughs> yeah. I should hug you and touch you yeah yes, yes. Air hugs. Yes. <laughs> yeah. okay well we We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks so much.
Thank you so much for listening to our podcast today. We hope you're finding it comforting and helpful along this crazy journey of parenting. If you like what you're hearing and you enjoy listening to our podcast, we would so appreciate it if you would subscribe and leave a quick review. Also, if you want to find out more about us, you can follow us on Instagram at The Mindful Mummies or visit our website at themindfulmummies.com. There you'll find all sorts of resources, our blog, and some background information. Thanks again and have a great day. follow Sina and I on Instagram, you'll see that we love Huga. It's one of our favorite things. There is no English word that directly translates from the Danish word Huga. It is often related to coziness during the colder months. However, to us, Huga means creating warmth, love, and togetherness by spending time with the ones you love all year round. We want to take a quick moment to tell you about our latest project, the Huga Family Box. It's a curated selection of our favorite local gifts aimed to bring families together and delivered right to you. Our mission is to bring families together and create presentness by being in the moment with the people you care about. This is what Huga is all about. It is a Danish word that means coziness, warmth, and togetherness. Every item in our Huga family box has been carefully selected by Lisa from Giving Gifts and Stina and Bree from the Mindful Mummies. They are all beautiful gifts that we use in our homes and with our own families to create a warm and inviting environment for the special, meaningful moments. Our seasonal family box will help you effortlessly spend quality time with your loved ones while learning and trying new things together along the way. So grab your family, open the Huga family box, and let's get hoogly! For more information on the Huga family box, you can follow us on Instagram at the Huga family box or visit our website at themindfulmummies.com.